Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. Today's another AMA episode, that is, Ask Me Anything. I love to answer your questions. If you have a question you think is going to be of broad interest, send it in. I'll answer it live on the air. Send your questions to victor at victorjm.com. That's victor at victorjm.com. On today's show, Patrick from Vancouver asks, how important is making site visits prior to purchasing a property? Patrick, that's a great question. The simple answer is, it depends. Certainly, you need to get a ton of information about the property before you buy. Some of it requires a site visit. That doesn't mean it has to be you to go to the property. You need to get the information one way or another. When I perform due diligence on a property, I'm looking for several things. I want to know what's around it. If the value of a property is determined by location, 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 then you want to learn as much as you can about the surrounding area. You want to evaluate the property in the context in which the property resides. You can have a thousand pictures of the subject property, but still know nothing about the value of the property because you haven't seen what's around it. I want to see the amenities in the area. What's the traffic like? How easy is it to get on and off the freeway? How close is good quality shopping? If I'm valuing the property as a high-end property, how close is the next Whole Foods? If the closest Whole Foods is 20 miles away, then that might be a problem. I want to look at the subject property and the properties immediately surrounding the subject property for evidence of erosion or standing water. It's a huge issue in many jurisdictions and you want to pay very close attention to that. I want to look at the zoning map and the municipal plan overlay. The properties next to me might be zoned according to their current use, but if the city has designated them for another use, I want to know that. Is the city going to widen a major road and take a 20 or 40 foot strip from my property at some point in the future? You might think I'm exaggerating by all this, but I'm not. I'm currently building two projects where the city's taken an additional 40 foot strip of land from properties that we own and added it to the road allowance. It's going to enable the city to widen the road when it feels that the need arises. Instead of having 851 feet of land depth from the road, we only have 811 feet of depth. It definitely has an impact on the project. I'm going to want the Environmental Phase 1 survey. That survey is going to require a site visit, but it won't be me. The site visit will be performed by the consultant who performs the survey. Now, if I don't feel like getting on an airplane and visiting a property, then I will find somebody local who's willing to perform a live video conference walking tour of the property and the area. I record the video, and by being connected to the live video, I'm able to direct the camera to anything I want to take a deeper look at. So far, everything I've talked about is outside the building. If the property has a structure on it, you definitely want to get a detailed view of a few key items. What's the finished product that you have in mind? How easy is it going to be to transform the existing structure into that new finished product? If the property has a basement and you want to develop the basement, you need to take a detailed look at the supporting columns, the vertical clearances, and the routing of utilities to determine the scope of work, or even the feasibility. You want to know the capacity of the electrical panel and find out if there's expansion room for what you want to accomplish. Adding a few breakers is a very manageable scope of work. Replacing the entire electrical main wiring and replacing the panel with a larger capacity one might not be. Again, you don't need to visit the property yourself, but you do need the answers to those key questions. The key is to have clarity on your due diligence checklist. Some items will require documentation. Some will require consultants. Some will require conversations with neighbors, local politicians, people in the planning department of the city. It all starts with a vision for the finished product and developing a detailed due diligence checklist before you even step away from your desk. If the property is in an area that I already know quite well, I might not need to do that neighborhood drive around. In that instance, I might be able to rely on my memory, Google Street View, and some video walkthroughs. If the property is a tax sale and it's secured and you're not able to get in and actually view the interior of the property, then you've got to make some very conservative assumptions about the state of the interior of the property. You've got to be assuming that you're going to be making some major, major renovations. So, Patrick, I want to thank you for an awesome question. And if you're loving what you're hearing on the podcast, go out and tell two friends today about the show. If they don't listen to podcasts, take a minute and show them how easy it is to access a podcast on their handheld device. Show them how with the push of a single button, they can subscribe to the podcast and have dozens of episodes ready and waiting for them to play. As you're thinking about that, go create your due diligence checklist 
Go make some great things happen. And we'll talk to you again tomorrow.